from Tongji University. Actually, it's a great honor to be here to see all of you. And thanks to Sebastian and also Professor O'Connor to invite me to be here. And uh, today I would like to introduce some of my work on this uh, structural health monitoring. This work I worked together with Sebastian and also Michael Farber actually in the past about this actually the role of this SHM in the context also considering the service life integrated management. Actually, it's uh, great for me to listen to this presentation by Matteo and uh, I found actually the basic idea almost same or close, very close to each other. <coughs> yes, so first I would like to introduce this motivation of this research work. So generally, as you all know this, we have uncertain days during our service life uh, about this uh, in the performance of structures. So because of that, we need this uh, health monitoring and uh, to s monitor the performance to get the information. And then actually we need quantification because normally existing result, uh, existing uh, research normally on qualif qualification, but in risk and the reliability analysis, normally we need quantifications. And in two aspects, actually one is, I think, optimization of this health monitoring and also the value of information, I think Matteo already introduced a, a lot. <coughs> That's the general uh, motivation of this work. And then <coughs> what we have, actually, we have two parts, as Matteo also introduced, actually we need this prior. So before the service life, we could assess the service life cost and also generally have probabilistic modeling of this structure performance. For different structures, normally we have this, uh, already we have this uh, uh, model for this corrosion, also model for fatigue. I think European code already in 2000, and the end, of, the end of last century and the beginning of this century, they have this code for this corrosion, and also many research on fatigue and also many, many other models. That's what we already have, this prior information. Then afterwards, during the service life, we have this annual, even more often, or even not so often, these observations from this health monitoring. So it uh, could be regarded as posterior information, posterior knowledge. So we have two parts, prior and the posterior. So then we can uniform these two things together to this one framework, uh, this generally called patient pre-posterior analysis. That's the, the general idea to formulate this of this work, the general idea of this work is to formulate uh, this uh, one general pre-posterior analysis framework for this, uh, to assess actually the value of information of structural health monitoring things. So the outline of my presentation has several parts. The first is service life cost assessment as I introduced in the motivation in the last slides. And the second part is the just, just uh, to introduce some generic modeling of this probabilistic modeling of this structural performance. And the third part is just assess, assess how to assess the value of information. What's the value of information from these annual observations to consider also the quantity uh, uncertainties in the data we have and uh, of this deterioration. And then the almost in the end is some simple example, finally some conclusions. So here we just consider one structure, uh, starting from year T0 to the end, and end with year we call TS, the end of the service life. And then first we have these two states, normally failure or not failure. If structure fails at the beginning or uh, in some years, then directly the cost will be the failure cost is called C fail. And then at year we say, like we assume or we define it's called TJ, we have some this inspection, one inspection, then from the inspection results, we could have two actions or two, we could make decision based on this inspection results. One is repair, one is no repair, well, called generic, also called do nothing. Then if we in both these two actions, then afterwards, also again, we have two possibilities. One is failure, one is no failure. So then this is choose this general decision trees uh, for this, um, the performance of one engineer structures. Then we have different costs from these different results of this performance. Then based on this decision tree, we could formulate this, uh, the service life cost 
into several parts. Actually, here, I think we choose five parts. The first part shows the inspection cost. So this PSTJ means that the structure still survived in that, uh, the year of inspection. Then the second part means the structure failed before this inspection. So we do not do any inspection. And the third part is the, this IR means we do repair after the inspection. So we make decision based on this repair, then multiply with repair cost. And the fourth part is we have, we make decision that we repair as a, that year, as the year of inspection. Then, but finally still failed afterwards before the end of service life. And the last one is we do not repair at the year of inspection but also no failure after the inspection. So this here, R, small r here means we consider this interest rate. So that's the five parts of this the service life cost. So we sum up, then this is the equation we calculated. And then the second part I would like to introduce is a probabilistic modeling of this structure performance. So we consider this one general engineer structure, so just uh, we formulate one is uh, a time dependent of uh, this limit state function. Here is a very general model for generic, <coughs> very general model for this uh, limit state function considering this deterioration of these structures. So here we have this uh, R0 means this uh, initial resistance and ST means time variant of this the load from external sources. And uh, this theta D and uh, the, the yeah, theta S is the uh, model uncertainties. M theta S is model uncertainties of this load, and theta D is model uncertainties of this D. D is, uh, means degradation or deterioration. Yeah, and uh, uh, also actually there's model uncertainties of this uh, resistance, but generally it's uh, smaller than this the load, external load, so normally we just omit it or we just can uniform is into one this modern uncertainties in the external load. And this Z is a design parameter to calibrate uh, this, uh, the reliability of these structures into some level according to the code. So here is uh, deterioration. As I said before, uh, at the beginning that normally we have this like corrosion like fatigue. It's, uh, but for this generic model we just consider it's uh, accumulation of this deterioration from each year. So from the year, uh, the first year to the year T, then it's an uh, accumulation of this deterioration. And also the event of failure could be written like this. So this uh, limit state function smaller than zero at time Ti. Then here it's uh, just uh, one simple Bayesian networks for this uh, uh, probabilistic uh, modeling of this structural performances. Here, just uh, one thing I need to mention here is just on the top is uh, MUD that we consider the, the uncertainties of these observations from this uh, increment of the deterioration. So we use hyperparameter. This means the mean value of these uh, observations or increment of this uh, delta. So that's the hyperparameter we consider in these Bayesian networks. Then again, uh, we have one inspection time at year TJ. So the event of det detection and also the repair that we set uh, one criteria for this uh, repair or not repair, we make decision. So then we, for this decision making, we have to some values or quantifications to define this uh, decision making. So the event of det detection and repair could be written like this. So if the total increment is equal or larger than some given value like DIR, then we make repair. If not, then we do nothing at that, that time. Again, the event of failure afterwards, so given the repair event at time TJ, then afterwards at time TI, this the event of failure could be right like this. And then this again, this Bayesian network could be updated by uh, not updated, yeah, just uh, rewritten like this, considering this repair or inspection time, yeah. Then this is the calculation of these uh, probabilities. The first is, there are actually five probabilities. The first is the probability of the structure that survive at time T, uh, so that time uh, at year TI. And the second is uh, failure at time TI. That means 
we survive at the year before that year, then at from one to TI minus one, then finally we fail it, failed, that structure failed at, time at year TI. And the third one is repair at that year. So that means again, it still survive at that year, then repair. Because we do inspection, then repair at that year. Then this the fourth one is we do repair and but failed afterwards. And the last one is we do not repair, but also again it's failed after in, uh, before the end of the service life. That's five probabilities. We can calculate it or formulate it here. And then <coughs> now we have monitoring or structural health monitoring and observations. We just say uh, to monitor in these some years from this year, this we just use the symbol T monitor ST. So we're starting from this year and to do this year. So we're starting from this year then to do this annually until the end of this service life. So then we use this Bayesian formulation. We can update. Oh, sorry, there are some. Yeah, see some mathematical equations. So you see some strange symbol here. Yeah. <coughs> so we use Bayesian uh, formulation that we can uh, update this the mean value, the probabilistic probability distribution of this the mean value of this MUD. So uh, one assumption. This formulation is just based on one's assumption that. This, uh, this uh, variable follow normal distribution. If follow other distribution, can have other uh, uh, calculations. You know, this is the, if we have else monitoring, then the mean value is updated like this. Then again, the service life cost can be updated like this. So it's the function of three parameters. One is uh, monitoring years, then the increment from this uh, annual observations from these monitorings, and also the year of inspections. All again, it's have, uh, mainly have two parts. One is the first part here you see on the right side of this equation means that uh, we do not have inspection after it because it's already failed. That's uh, the first. Then if not failed, then we have, oh sorry, we have failed before the monitoring. Then we still survive before the monitoring. Then it's again have five, five parts about uh, in the service life cost assessment. Again, it's also these five parts corresponding to that five parts uh, without any monitoring or in uh, uh, the cost assessment I introduced before. Yeah, then the probability and can be updated as, as this one. So it's uh, have with this, you can see have with this uh, two photostrophy uh, on the top of this each probability variables. That means it's an uh, updated formation based on this uh, is, uh, more monitoring. So, uh, so this is also the probability of survive, and there's also the probability of failure, and also the decision of repair and the no repair or something like this. So then it's uh, uh, this is the cost that we do monitoring the service life cost. We do monitor. That is the expected value. This means this E here means the expected value <coughs> with this uncertain output of this the mean value of this uh, increment of this annual observations. So this is a monitoring cost, and the value of information should be this the difference of these two costs. One is the cost without any observations. So just uh, the cost I mentioned at the beginning, this the service life cost minus the cost with and your observations from monitoring. So this is the basic, I think, the idea of this work. So it has to do with this value of information, actually, or value of this SHM. Then here, uh, at last, I would like to introduce this the example just to illustrate how to implement or what's the result for general calculations for these some stru engineer structures. So we assume that the structure has a service life you say like 50 years, and the repair criteria, this uh, parameter, DIR, is said to be 0 0.2. Then the probabilistic characteristics of these random variables are listed here. So you see uh, only one special thing, the increment of this delta is with uh, this uh, vari variable, this mean value. And then the mean value of this MUD, again, it's uh, assumed to have normal distribution here. 
and the design parameter that is set to be 0 0.21 just to, to keep that the beginning of the service life, this, uh, the structures have the probability at a magnitude around 10 to minus five, m minus five. So that's the idea of this design parameter. And the values of this interest rate and also the inspection cost and the repair cost and the failure cost is listed as here. So that's the first calculation. Actually, to do this, uh, we do this with the Monte Carlo simulation. To do first calculation for the service life cost, we just say, uh, assume that uh, there are no any monitoring, structural health monitoring, and what's the variation of the service life cost. So it's uh, on the top, this blue line, it's the variation of service life, co life cost with the variation of in which year we have this uh, inspection. So it's like this. So then after uh, at the bottom, there are five different curves to see the variations of different uh, cost, the variation also with the function of this is an inspection year. So you can see for the first C1 here is uh, the inspection cost. That means just the, the, the cost that, the, the expected cost, oh sorry, uh, of this structure that still survive at this the inspection, this, uh, at this the year of inspection, then multiply with this inspection cost. So you see it's uh, gradually down, but changes very s s slowly because this, this value is, we assume, only to one. So it's a very small. So it's a little down, but changes uh, not so much. But for this, the second part, the failure, expected failure cost before this uh, inspection, you can see at the beginning, it changes almost nothing before, like we say, the f year five. But afterwards, it's uh, increased greatly. That's to, uh, this is uh, this cost. And the C3, <coughs> you can see it's uh, we the expected cost that we will have this repair. Then it's uh, a little up at the beginning, then afterwards a little down. That's the fourth one. It's uh, the trend is similar as C3. It's uh, we make decision that repair, but at the time of in years of the inspection, but failed afterwards. Then you see it's a similar C3, but changes greatly more great, greater than this C3. C4 is changes greatly, or more great, sorry, greater than C3. It's also, uh, at the beginning, it's up then down gradually afterwards. And the C5, you can see the last one, that we will not do any repair cost, but failed after this in the year of inspection. It's completely different with the, the second part. So you can see it's down very fast at the beginning, but finally it's graduated to zero. It's uh, almost zero, it's like this. So you can see for this uh, service life cost at around 22 or 24, it's reached the minimum. It's around this one. This, so this is the service life cost without any this monitoring. So here, that's the last one. This uh, the service life cost. Uh, this we just compare these two different costs. One is the curve, the blue curve. Actually, this is the curve I show in last slides. This is the service life cost with uh, without sorry, as monitoring, and uh, the red one. That's the expected cost. We have this uh, monitoring. So this uh, x axis for these two curves are different. For the blue curve, the x axis is the year of inspection. And for the red curve, it, uh, this axis represents the year of this starting, the starting year of monitoring. So you can see for, blue, for this blue curve, it's around 22 or 23, yeah, it's uh, around this, it reaches the minimum. But for the year of starting uh, year of this monitoring, then it's uh, around, I remember, if I remember correctly, it's around year 19, yeah. So it's totally monitoring years, the optimi optimal value is 31 years. So starting from 19, the year 19, we have this uh, mm, monitoring, then will be uh, optimal solution for these structures. And uh, this is the difference between these two costs is 2.6. You can calculate for this example. It's like this one. So finally, uh, I reached the conclusions. And uh, 
two conclusions. One is this approach is just to introduce is for the quantification. Actually, the aim here is how to quantify the value of information. And based on these two parts, one is service life cost assessment. The second is uh, this, uh, we just the formula is one generic judge performance model to consider this uh, SHM. And the uh, second part is just formulate this uh, Bayesian, this pre-posterior decision theory to see the difference between the, the cost with, without and with this health monitoring cost then to just to optimize or to optimal, to get optimal this SHM, this strategy to support this integrated, integrated management. And actually there are many other, uh, many things can be done actually in this part. Actually like uh, into how uh, actually we could integrate like uh, maybe you're more, not maybe, I think, I believe that you're more expert on this field than me that there are many different deterioration models and also many different service life costs. Like deterioration model here is very generic. You can integrate uh, in this corrosion on also fatigue and also other uh, s different this this degradation models. And another thing I just thinking this day just uh, because for these networks systems and also for these large scale en engineer systems, one important thing is where to uh, implement this mo monitoring. That's another issue. That's uh, for these networks that because it's uh, geographically distributed and uh, it's large scale, we cannot monitor everywhere. And th th some scholars call the importance of this information or importance of these things also can be, I think it also can be integrated uh, into this uh, framework. That's the uh, general idea. Yeah, thank you for your attention, that's all. <laughs>